This is a short-nosed ground snake. You've probably never heard of it before, and that's understandable, because this is the first known video footage of this species anywhere on the internet. They only live in the tropical dry forests of western Ecuador, but given that 96% of this habitat has been destroyed for human activities, the future of these snakes, and the thousands of other species that call this place home, is in jeopardy. The dry forest is amazingly biodiverse, but we know next to nothing about many of the species that live here, and this is particularly true of its reptiles. My name is Evan, and this is Harrison. We're twin brothers on a mission to make you an insider in the natural world. We've always been drawn to overlooked and misunderstood animals because their life stories are often incredibly fascinating. And today, we want to share some of those stories that have never been told before to help you understand how they fit into this ecosystem's rich tapestry of life and why they're worth protecting. Our adventure begins in one of the best preserved stands of dry forest left anywhere in Ecuador, and if there's one thing you can count on, it's that the diversity of reptiles here doesn't disappoint. This is extremely exciting. We have our first reptile find here in the well-preserved dry forest, and it is the reticulated tropical racer, not a snake that we've been able to catch up with yet. And it is incredibly placid. One thing I love about these animals is that they're visual hunters. This is a diurnal species primarily, so their eyes are huge. It takes up so much of his head, and he is looking around trying to understand what's going on here. But he's being remarkably calm. The racers that we see back home, although in a different genus also have a very different temperament. You would not be able to hold a North American racer like this right out of the wild. But how about that? A beautiful snake. We're going to get some pictures and then let him go right back into the environment. But I am very happy to see a snake out here. After we released the racer, it became clear that their name is no accident. These snakes are incredibly fast moving, using their speed and sharp vision to take down a huge variety of prey with everything from rodents and birds to frogs and even other snakes being on the menu. Now, we caught this guy pretty quickly, but that does not mean that finding reptiles out here is easy. The dry forest is a complex and sometimes disorienting habitat, so our success in finding the rarely seen animals that we're looking for is really predicated upon the team we're working with. We've been exploring Ecuador alongside several of our good friends and fellow wildlife educators. And today, we have enlisted the help of a true local legend, Juan de Dios Morales, an expert dry forest guide and the founder of the Wild Guayaquil Initiative, one of the region's most important conservation organizations. His expertise and intimate knowledge of this forest have allowed us to push much farther into the habitat and find many more animals than we ever could have on our own. And because we knew where to look, it wasn't long before Evan had spotted our first lizard target of the day. We have a little world tail iguana sitting right here in the rocks. He might think he's camouflaged, but these guys are super quick. Got him. Nice. All right, buddy. All right, all right. You're okay. You're okay. There he is. Oh, he's trying to, trying to bite me there. So this guy is actually just a sub-adult. It's not fully grown yet, and I can tell it's a male, actually. If you look under his throat, he has that little black bar. It's a really diagnostic characteristic of the males of this species. You can see it has a nice long tail, and it's pretty thick. That's a good indication that this guy's getting enough food out here, which is a good sign that this is a nice, healthy individual. Now, what I want to show you is take a look at this lizard's belly. They get their name Iridescent Whirltail Iguana from that beautiful coloration that is currently just kind of centralized on his stomach, but as they grow, that color will start to spread up to their neck, and the adult males are really, really beautiful. They have a blue and iridescent green patch all over their throat, so this gets to be a really pretty species as they're young like this. They mostly have darker coloration that helps them blend in with the leaf litter, where they'll hunt for little insects and things. But wow, this is a great little catch. I'm glad we were able to get it in hand, because these are super fast lizards, really difficult to catch, but to catch up with them in their natural habitat is always really exciting. Man, I love these little lizards. I think we're gonna get a few more shots of this guy and then we'll let him get back on his way. The richness of the tropical dry forest is on par with a proper rainforest, and there's so much life here that animals need to diversify their survival strategies to an incredible degree to mitigate competition for resources. In just one small section of the forest, we found two lizards utilizing very different lifestyles, which goes to show how finely tuned the roles of animals here really are. 
This knowledge can actually provide useful hints for how and where to find wildlife in this dense ecosystem. For example, the iridescent whirltail iguana is primarily terrestrial, meaning it spends the majority of its time on the ground. And we knew that if they were patrolling the forest floor, there may be other species using a different part of the habitat to survive. Our intuition served us well, and as we scanned higher in the vegetation, Harrison quickly called out another interesting lizard. We have our first coastal leaf-tailed gecko. I'm gonna see if I can catch him. It's interesting to see them out during the day. Got him. Nice. Buddy. Want to be very gentle. Now, the cool thing about these geckos is that they are actually able to change the color of their skin. They can't do it as dramatically as some other lizard species like chameleons, for example, but they can change their skin from this darker coloration to match the tree bark that it was sitting on to the very bright white color that we saw on the other individual. But how cool is that? I did not expect to see one of these nocturnal lizards. We must have flushed it out when we all moved past. We are gonna let this guy get back because we don't want him to be out very long in the heat of the day. But how about that? I always love seeing these guys. The tropical dry forest has already proven to be an overwhelmingly diverse place. But if you're not here when the sun goes down, you haven't seen the half of it. After dark, an unbelievable variety of bizarre animals come out to begin their nightly activities. And as we pushed deeper into the jungle, we were seeing some fascinating stuff. Giant tarantulas, crazy looking beetles, and tiny but very vocal frogs were just a few of the animals stealing our attention. But while hiking through a dry creek bed cutting through the hillside, we were stopped in our tracks by an animal none of us had expected to see. A massive land crab. Now this is a pretty cool find. This is a terrestrial crab, and there are quite a few of them moving around in this habitat, but I imagine you wouldn't expect to see an animal like this in a tropical dry forest. But in fact, these crabs are perfectly adapted for this habitat. Juan was telling us that in the wet season, they will migrate several hundred meters above sea level up these creeks. Now, where we're standing right now, the water is completely dried up, but that's okay for this species. Because it's terrestrial, as a lot of crabs are able to, this one can and breathe air just fine. And this is something that I was really hoping to see as soon as we heard that they were found in this area. I think something that should be interesting to point out is uh, these guys are very important uh, part of the food chain over here. So mm -hmm. you never wonder what kind of animals will be eating these kind of things, right? But I know you are more common to see raccoons very close to the cities, but the ones that we have here, the crab eating raccoons, they, they are more into the forest and, and that's why these crabs will be part of their diet as well as some of the common black hogs that we have in these particular areas where uh, water is around, right? So mangrove forest and also these kind of ravine areas of, of the tropical dry forest. That's so fascinating. One of the most bizarre invertebrates you can find. And still, as we learn more about the ecosystem overall, we can figure out how it fits in. Every animal here has a role and every animal here is important. So we're gonna let this guy get back to whatever it was doing, but that is a really cool invertebrate to find. It may seem weird to see a crab adapted to live in a hilly forest habitat, but this is just one of the unexpectedly fascinating life stories that the dry forest supports. This ecosystem provides surprises at almost every turn, and as we've seen, many of the reptiles here have evolved some unconventional lifestyle strategies. Our search continued well into the night, and as we were flipping some cover on the side of the trail, we encountered a snake that we guarantee you've never seen before, because you're about to see the first time it's ever been featured on YouTube. Have a look at this, we have another snake out here. This is a short-nosed ground snake. What's really interesting about these guys is that they're fossorial. They spend a lot of their time underground, and it's only at night that they'll come up onto the surface where they'll start hunting. They'll eat all kinds of little soft-bodied invertebrates like worms and slugs and things, also other small inverts, all kinds of insects. You can see this is a pretty small snake and they won't get much larger than this individual here. And it's absolutely beautiful. It has that iridescence all over its body and a beautiful pattern too that helps them camouflage into the leaf litter where they hunt. Now what's really cool about these guys is they actually have a very sharp little point on the end of their tail that they can use as a defense mechanism. But for the most part, all they're gonna do in the face of a predator is flee. So I'm really glad that we were able to get this guy in hand. This is an exciting little find, but I think we will let him get on his way. But I couldn't be happier with the luck we're having with all the snakes out here tonight. Hi, buddy. There's you are. And off he goes. That is so cool. It's not often that we get to feature an animal like the short-nosed ground snake that most likely has never been filmed before. 
And sharing incredible stories like this one that everyone else ignores is one of the biggest reasons that we started this channel. Reptiles often get the short end of the stick in the popularity contest that is wildlife conservation because they're not traditionally cute or cuddly and people don't tend to recognize how important they are to their ecosystems. But the truth is, the world would look very different without them, and not in a good way. Reptiles are among the most adaptable animals on Earth. And here in Ecuador, they occupy every level of the food web and fill more diverse ecological roles than you would ever imagine. From tiny, soil-dwelling invertebrate hunters to one of the country's most dominant predators. This means that every part of the ecosystem would be severely damaged if we were to lose these animals, and we are only just starting to understand the true impact that reptiles have on places like the tropical dry forest. So to ignore their conservation needs is to risk destabilizing the entire thing. We have so much more to learn about the hidden lives of these animals and how best to protect them. But this raises an important question. What can you do to help if you don't have any access to the species that need it? Well, the good news is, just by watching this video, you're already doing something really valuable. We are fortunate enough to be able to seek out rare reptiles in the wild and give their stories a platform. But it's only by you watching this video and sharing it with your friends that we can actually start to make a change. Because this is how we can generate the public support these animals need if they are to survive. If you want to learn more about how resilient the reptiles of Ecuador truly are, check out this video where we challenge ourselves to see how many species we can find in a very unlikely habitat, a working agricultural ranch. And with that, we hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one.